Hello, everyone. Happy International Pronouns Day. My name is Bo, and I use they, them, theirs pronouns. Um, I am the Multicultural Center Assistant here at Clackamas Community College. So what is International Pronouns Day, and why do we celebrate it? International Pronouns Day is a day that seeks to make respecting, sharing, and educating about personal pronouns commonplace. Referring to people by the pronouns they determine for themselves is basic to human dignity. And being referred to by the wrong pronouns particularly affects transgender and gender non-conforming people. So together we can celebrate International Pronouns Day and really transform society to celebrate people's multiple intersecting identities. Let's start with just going over the basics. What are pronouns? In English, there are a number of different kinds of pronouns, so this might be confusing. Uh, International Pronouns Day is specifically referring to third person personal pronouns. I'll give you some examples here. So you can see at the top, there's an example of first person pronouns. This is when we use I. I am a writer and I wrote that myself. These ideas are mine. And second person, those ideas are yours. I like your ideas. Um, the ones we're talking about today for International Pronouns Day are third person pronouns. These are the three examples on the bottom. She is a writer. He wrote that himself. Those ideas are theirs. So I have the three most common pronoun types um, shared here as an example. She, her, hers, he, him, his, and they, them, theirs are the three most common pronouns that are used today. So what about pronouns in languages other than English? This is very much an English problem, right? Uh, some languages don't have gendered personal pronouns at all. So this isn't even an issue, it's great. Uh, some languages, however, gender more than just pronouns, including nouns and adjectives that describe people. So it's kind of a work in progress. Language is evolving over time. And the most important thing is just to check in with the people that are a part of these languages themselves and use it on an everyday basis and ask for their input on this um, and what they use. That's the most important thing. Just last week, there was an article that was released about the Spanish language and how they are currently trying out new gender neutral language. You're probably familiar with hearing the word Latin X. And it doesn't work as well as having an A or an O at the end like you would for feminine or masculine. A new one that is being introduced right now is having an E at the end for gender neutral. And it flows a lot better with the language. And so they're hoping that it picks up. Overall, it's just best to ask somebody who knows a little bit more about the language. Than you. So what if you make a mistake and misgender someone? Probably everyone watching this has made that mistake at some point. I know I have. Um, it's okay. Mistakes are a part of the learning process. It's, it's tough. But when you make a mistake, just take a breath and acknowledge it. If you can acknowledge your mistake in that moment and immediately correct yourself with the right pronoun and just keep going with the conversation, that is the best case scenario. That's what we're looking for. However, there are times when you don't realize it in the moment. Maybe someone has to tell you later, or you realize it once someone else has already started talking. That's okay too. If you have the opportunity to talk to people that were part of that conversation later and just say that you realized you made a mistake and you're gonna do better in the future, that's what we're looking for. Try your hardest though to avoid placing the burden of the mistake on the misgendered individual. What I mean by this is try your hardest not to apologize. When we apologize, we're asking for forgiveness, and that's really not something that should be forgiven, right? This isn't something we want the other person to have to forgive us for. Our intent is really just to say, I know I messed up, I'm gonna do better next time. So try your hardest not to place that burden on them if you can help it. And lastly, just practice. Practice as much as you can by referring to your water bottle with they, them pronouns, or your car, or your pet, or a stuffed animal. As much as you can practice this at home, 
will definitely help you normalize using it in the second. And it's okay to ask. More than anything with pronouns, it's okay to ask. It's okay to ask others to correct you or help you when you make mistakes. It's okay to ask how to properly use someone's pronouns if you're unfamiliar with them. Even if you're unfamiliar with how to pronounce them, if you've never heard them before, this is something that's perfectly okay to ask. It's also okay to ask if someone has changed their pronouns. Maybe they are presenting their gender expression in a new way. Maybe they changed their name or came out about their sexuality. And so they might be giving you little hints that maybe they want to use different pronouns. It's okay to ask. This can be something that easily comes up in a meeting where we all say, hey, pronouns kind of a living thing. They can change over time. So let's just check in about our pronouns. I'm still using they, them, their pronouns. How about you? Um, it's a very simple way to ask. And another thing that's okay to ask is how someone might want you to correct someone else. If you are having a conversation with a friend about me and you hear them misgender me, how should you handle that? You probably don't know because we haven't discussed it. You and I haven't discussed it. Um, so the best thing to do is ask the individual when that happens. You know, hey, Bo, um, someone I was talking to misgendered you and I was just wondering if there's anything you would like me to do or you're comfortable with me doing in that moment. Um, and I will say, yeah, if you're comfortable with it, I would love for you to correct that person. But if not, it's okay. Someone else might say, hey, you know what? I'm actually not out to that person at all. They don't know that I have the, this uh, preference of pronouns. And so I'd actually prefer if you don't say anything at all because that would out me. Too. So it really depends on the situation. It's really good to be open and communicating with another person about these kind of things. It's a very personal and in a lot of cases, public announcement. So um, make sure that you have their consent and everyone is comfortable with how it's being communicated. Overall, it's okay to ask. Now, what about your own pronouns? Regardless of your gender identity, pronouns is something that we should all feel comfortable sharing and we should all encourage others to share. Um, the more cisgender people that share their pronouns, um, the easier it makes it for transgender and gender nonconforming people to be open about their pronouns without getting harassment or feeling othered in that process. It becomes a more normalized thing. Nobody really has to stress about it. And it's just, it's just something that we do. Just like introducing ourselves with their name. So that's a great first example. Um, a perfect time to share your pronouns is in your first introduction. Hi, I'm Bo and I use they, them pronouns. That's something that if you're not used to doing it, might feel a little weird at first, but the more you do it and the more people around you do it, the easier it gets, the more comfortable it is to express that. Putting your pronouns in your email signature is another great example. You can have your pronouns right under your name. Some people even link, what does this mean next to their pronouns? for people who might be reading the email and aren't familiar with pronouns, you can have it linked to a website that more clearly explains what pronouns are about so that it can be a learning opportunity for others. Putting your pronouns in your social media bio is also really helpful so that people in general public also know how to refer to you just by clicking on your name. And if you're going to events or you're at work and you have a name tag where you can put your pronouns on, that is also really helpful. Places where you know you're gonna be meeting people for the first time is a great place to have a name tag with pronouns or a pronoun pin on your t-shirt. And now that we're in this remote environment where you probably aren't wearing a name tag all the time, um, there are other ways you can do this, like have a Zoom background like I have on mine that has my pronouns clearly listed there. You can also add your pronouns at the end of your name on Zoom. and so. This gives us plenty of opportunities to share our pronouns with everyone around us, regardless of the environment. I wanna conclude with a few resources 
that I think are especially important for this International Pronouns Day. Mypronouns.org is a great resource. Pronounsday.org is also a great resource. And this last one, pronouns.minus18.org.au. This is essentially a pronouns game where you can select a specific set of pronouns that you want to use. And it gives you tons of practice opportunities to try out these pronouns in real life. And that website was designed by a bunch of transgender and gender nonconforming youth in Australia. So definitely go check that one out. I will have it linked in the, in the YouTube below. All right, thank you. Have a great International Pronouns Day.